cases. What we realize is that culture in general and specifically black culture likes to keep a lot of secrets about very basic things. You know, our parents didn't tell us, you know, why they disciplined us the way they did. They just did it because they had to. It was necessary. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't tell us when they were having money troubles and money issues, you know, um, but it was something they did deal with. But it's like a secret, something you really don't want to expose. Um, but we need that information. We need to know what hurdles are coming up so we know when to jump and how high. Welcome to the Speak Your Success Podcast. What's going on, successors, and welcome to the Speak Your Success Podcast. We have a special guest in the building, uh, none other than Mr. Belief. How are we doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thank you so much for having me on. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good out here in San Diego. It's sunny. Yeah, uh, somewhat, somewhat yeah. sunny. You know, a little cloudy, but it's good weather regardless. Earlier, earlier it was sunny. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yep. take that. We'll take that. Welcome, welcome to San Diego, bro. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely appreciate it. Um, so, just just like we were talking about a little bit earlier, off just offline, um, man, and just talking about how you know you are. One half of the How Married How Married Are You podcast. Yes, yeah. And then t so the people who might be out there who may not be familiar with who you are, can you just give a little bit of backstory on who you are and what you do? I mean, it's so crazy because, you know, even like defining who I am is just is so interesting. Um, I would say that if people are asking me who I am, I would say that I, I, I'm a man who equips fathers. I equip men to be fathers, you know. Uh, and so with that, I have a YouTube channel called Belief in Fatherhood where I... Uh, address some of the issues and interesting things about fatherhood and i i mm -hmm. kind of expose those things to the world by being very vulnerable and transparent um and then half of how married are you uh my wife and i have a podcast called how married are you where we just literally go through all the struggles that we're having in marriage and just talk about how sometimes difficult and how fun it can be and um you know, uh, you know, it's all about being transparent and vulnerable in all these spaces. What we realize is that culture in general, and specifically black culture, likes to keep a lot of secrets about very basic things. You know, our parents didn't tell us, you know, why they disciplined us the way they did. They just did it because they had to. It was necessary. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't tell us when they were having money troubles and money issues, you know, um, but it was something they did deal with. But it's like a secret, something you really don't want to expose. Um, but we need that information. We need to know what hurdles are coming up so we know when to jump and how high definitely definitely man and it, even even just with you saying that just if if you all haven't taken the time and listened to the how married are you podcast i would encourage you to because like like i was sharing with you uh, and like we even sharing with, with your wife that that gabby and i have have gained a lot of value from the podcast yeah. and and even outside of that man it's been great talking points for yeah. us to unpack certain things to address certain things um, so I just want to thank you, man, just yeah, on here. Of course, man. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, we, I'm glad that you received something from it. Uh, it hits a lot of people differently, but it's I'm glad to know that it's helping people out in the way we intended it. Definitely. That's, that's super dope. OK, now. So with, with, with belief, can, can you rewind back for us? How did you get to the point of, of belief in fatherhood? Yeah. And, you know, just talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I, I, my, my parents had custody, um, sep, you know, separate custody. My, my mom lived in Baltimore. My dad lived in California. Um, I had my school years were spent in Baltimore for the most part and summers were in California. Um, and it was just kind of like this duality and like the way I was living in different places from a two parent home to a one parent home. I, my dad remarried and, you know, uh, we got married and things were different, definitely from the California perspective. And so I, you know, definitely struggled the most of my life realizing that, man, I, things would really be a lot easier if my dad was around. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't so much that he didn't want to be around, but he literally had another life and a wife. And it wasn't like a, I don't, I don't blame him for not being around. Cause I understand like even my mom, my mother was kind of a difficult person to be around. Um, so I understand why he made the decision he made, but I still was like, man, it was, it, it would have been very valuable for me mm -hmm. to, to be around. And I don't think he understood how valuable he was to me. And I couldn't explain it because I'm a hurt child. You know what I mean? Who's like trying to be okay with everything. Um, and so once I became a father, I just realized that so many things were happening that no one would believe me if I didn't, if I didn't make a video about it. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't actually have proof on video, then mm -hmm. no one would even believe me or they wouldn't care. You know, like it's one thing if so like, you know, my, my child tried to like suck my nipple, man. It made me feel very uncomfortable. 
Mm-hmm. But it's a difference when you see your child contemplating it for like three minutes and then just taking the plunge and bite, <laughs> biting a hairy nipple. You know what I'm saying? Like that's true. That that's is true. that is another level of of you know what I'm saying of proof. <laughs> and so I became like kind of like you know in this position. All of a sudden, I'm married to this beautiful woman. She's a full time mathematician uh, uh, and a math teacher, and I'm like this struggling artist slash stay at home dad. Mm. And I'm home. And I'm having these really weird interactions with my children that I'm kind of like, man, like, I'm really having a hard time controlling my temper. I'm having a hard time controlling my anger. And I would turn on the camera as a way to kind of um, see if anybody else had dealt with this, but also have Mm. accountability. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, it's really easy to lose your mind with a child because it's like, you don't have, like, you don't have the patience yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So like think about being a stay at home parent. It's like there's no end of the tunnel. Like you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's just doo doo, throw up, spit up every day. It's just like it's it's over and over. Like all of us, it's always the same thing. And no one's encouraging the babies. It's you get emotionally tired. Mm -hmm. So it's like all of a sudden that you just not hearing babies crying. You're hearing like you're failing again you know, over and over again. So Believe in Fatherhood was just kind of like, I just started posting videos to be like, man, like I just need someone to laugh at this because this really hurts. Uh-huh. And then it became into like, well, I can actually make these documentary style videos that, you know, show the complexities of what I'm dealing with internally. And because I was already doing music before as an MC, mm-hmm. I was I already had the equipment to kind of at least have the music well done, gotcha. you know. And so I would like score the videos and then um, I eventually saved up and got a camera. I started out on broken iPhones. Like I used my iPhone and then any iPhone that friends would give me that had a broken screen, but the camera worked, I would use it. So Uh. I would put those cameras in the headrest of the car when we were driving. And so each kid would have their own camera and I'd had one, like one GoPro Hero 4 and then my phone for my main shooter. And that's how I like got through the first like two seasons of Belief in Fatherhood. Crazy, right? Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that relentlessness I was talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so for the people who who are you know who are out there listening who who don't know who don't know anything about the conversation we had and we're talking relentlessness, what would you say to somebody who is out there who is who who is the 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 art? I'm not gonna say starving artist, mm-hmm. but they're the artists that's that's wanting to elevate. They're the artists that's that's wanting to make this this passion into a paycheck or ma- turn this passion into something. Furthermore, what would you say to that person? I would say to the person that's really attempting to or aspiring to do something great, I would suggest that they um, I would suggest that they really manage their time, like see how much time you're spending doing everything you're doing. Um, One thing that we talked about earlier, you were like, Mm -hmm. man, that's actually a lot of things I have to do. I'm not sure if I have that much time. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But, you know, me with four kids, I'm kind of like, what are you talking about? you know what i'm saying so you actually realize how much time you have you had when you don't have it anymore so when i had my first kid and my second kid i realized i'm actually getting a lot more done because i have less time Mm -hmm. because it wasn't like i was waiting to be in spot like before i would just wait for inspiration to come Mm -hmm. but when my kids were sleeping at night time i was i i had to be inspired because that's the only time i had Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah so the thing I would tell everyone is that, you know, inspiration is cute as a whimsical thing that comes and goes. But inspiration is most profitable and best as a muscle that you that you activate. Mm. How, how do you how do you activate inspiration now? Well, you have to use it. It's it's something that, you know, I'm in, like I'm inspired when I have I have the time, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and even if I'm not inspired, that is my time to be inspired. And if I don't capture it at that moment, then I lost. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, it's unfair to think of it that way. But that is really what it takes, I feel, to be on another level of productivity. You know, you know, passion into a paycheck, that's a big leap. Hmm. You know, a lot of people got a passion. They ain't getting paid for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dang. Martin Luther King had a passion. You know what I'm saying? Like He got paid very little for that. You know, but he was willing to die for it. And that's the thing. It's like, I'm willing to die for this. And I talked to my, my wife about it. And we were talking about it. I was like, man, I think I'm actually willing to die for this. Mm. Like, I'm willing to die so that fathers know that they are valuable and that they need to understand that their kids need them. Like, I'm willing to die to make to get that message across. Wow. I mean, I think 
I mean, I think that's beyond admirable. But even outside of that, like I was telling you, I think that so many families. Well, when I was just telling you how I I'm working with student athletes and yeah, and then I told you I would like to more so work with males because I believe that ultimately how how you impact the male's life will impact like a generation or a family tree or a lineage whatever you however you want to word it but so i i think i mean you doing that with with belief in fatherhood i think that's just amazing yeah that's the goal i mean we we just went through a huge transition business wise we went through a whole new marketing thing and getting everything turned around and changed out and i'm you know trying to you know in order to like uh be you know kind of admired by men you have to be you have to catch a man's eye which is very difficult as a man Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so you have to be something to aspire toward you can't just be like a regular dude you know what i'm saying or you have to be or you have to be hilarious you know because men are attracted to comedy and things that are like pleasing to the eye now a lot of men wouldn't admit but like you know if you see like a super muscular dude or like someone who's like dressed to the t and they look good like, dude wouldn't be like, man, that dude look good. But they'd be like, man, that dude's kind of fresh. I'll probably want to follow him the jacket style. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So as someone who, you know, is getting to that point and you want to, like, kind of put yourself and market yourself more to men, you got to understand a few things about men. Men don't really buy a lot of stuff. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Men aren't really the first to work on themselves in a self-help situation, you know? So there are a lot of men who do, but you just have to find those people. And they're not everywhere where all the other people are, you know what I'm saying? That's good. That's, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah. So, so in 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 this in this transition with 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 you with with belief in fatherhood and like you were saying, you've gone through remarketing and and doing all of that, and with you having this strong of a charge, what's what's your stance? Or just not not even what's your stance in regards to therapy. Mm-hmm. Like what, what 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 do you what do you feel about therapy? What do you think in regards to that? Well, I think therapy um, is great. Uh, I think therapy uh, would be very beneficial to someone like me in this stage of my life. Um, I have not gone to therapy. I, I went uh, twice, um, and I was like, I don't like this guy, so I'm not going mm. back. You know what I'm saying? And so finding the right therapist probably would be. It's, it's, it's harder, and I think that's probably what I should be trying to do. But is that what you're asking? Like, why am I not in therapy? Well, no, I didn't know if you were in therapy or no, not. No, I'm not. I'm okay. not in therapy. So my wife has been like, you know, on the podcast, she's like, yeah, you know, I think you really would benefit from therapy. And I don't disagree with her. But she just gone. She's just started going to therapy. And as soon as people start going to therapy, they think everybody <laughs> needs therapy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's kind of like, yeah, you've been needed therapy, though. Um, but, yeah, like, I think that, you know, people who want to help people, often spend most of their time exhausting their energy toward helping people and they don't help themselves. Mm. And so they probably need therapy the most. And I'm one of those people. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Dang. Man. Yeah. I mean, cause I like just, just, just like to your point and I didn't, I didn't tell you, uh, I didn't tell you and Yvette earlier, but so in, in our story, when, when, when we actually, there was a span of time where we were broken up for like two years. Oh wow. And then Gabby went and she saw her own therapist. I went and saw my own therapist. And then I also was going through, like a 12 stage biblical recovery is what they call it. Wow. So it was like a year long thing. And I tried to get, I was like, Oh, just like to your point about, you know, when you go through therapy, you're trying to pull other people. So I was going through and I was like, you know, you, you should do it too. Cause they mm-hmm. encourage you not to date. I was like, you should do it too. And I'm yeah. going, she was like, no, 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 I don't need you. You got that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good on that. But, but just seeing like the benefit that it has had on me. Cause I didn't realize, cause going to back to your brand, I didn't realize that I had like un, unaddressed I guess I don't want to call it daddy issues I don't think that's really what it was but there was a point in my life where my father we respected him in the house he provided the house but at the same time there there was like a grudge that was created as we were growing up and I finally like after going through therapy I guess that helped me build up the confidence to turn to him and talk to him I was like dad I was mad at you about this and I don't like when you say this to me and then we were able to have that conversation. We hashed it out. Wow. And then, and like I told you, we were working together in the business. Yeah. So, it and was I think, and I think different. that's, that's super dope. Like, you know, I, I really look forward to that reconciliation process with my own father. Mm. Um, and we're not beefing or nothing like that, but it's just like a lot of stuff underneath the surface. It's kind of like, man, this is gross, mm. you know? And so we can only go surface. We can't go deeper than that. You know what I mean? I got a lot of mommy issues too. 
And like the fact that I know all these things irritates me because like, why am I even speaking about parenthood if I'm having all these issues? You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but one thing is like, you know, I understand a lot of these things about myself and I know that they need to be worked on. And so, you know, eventually I'm going to get there, but I can't necessarily exhaust energy trying to find the right therapist. Like that is not a good use of time for me. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think, I think if, if there was a shortcut and I think, uh, black men's, I think it's uh black men health care or something like that but it's like this organization a program that is trying to help black men get therapists you know mm -hmm. what i mean of other from other black you know professionals um and i'm looking forward to you know doing something like that but i just can't exhaust time like going and meeting with someone for an hour and like being like yeah i hate you and i'm out you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like yeah. I, it needs to be a little bit more directed toward me because this was someone who was like yo I, I got his therapist man he's amazing i sit with the dude and he's just like i'm just like nah this ain't the guy you know uh, what i mean so so somebody oversold him yeah yeah gotcha gotcha but i mean even even to the point about what you're saying about how like you know you talking to to the point of fatherhood you talking to the point of parenting but i i still think that and you know i'm not a parent mm -hmm. i have no children yet but i still think to a certain extent you're still very equipped mm. to, to to address that because although yes we all have past we all have our history mm -hmm. and you know what whatever those scars wounds whatever that might be but then at the same time you've also recreated the parenting experience mm -hmm. as you've had your own children as, as you've learned okay i can't do this with this child i can't do this with that child yeah so man i mean i, I just want to encourage you in that i appreciate uh, that man yeah man because because I, I mean you you know like i know like there's self-limiting beliefs mm -hmm. that can that we can put on ourselves because it's like we feel that we should be here or we feel that we should we we can't do certain things because of past experiences yeah, or whatever yeah. that might look like so yeah man i just want to encourage you man from one black man to another. Uh, i appreciate it bro thank you man <laughs> yeah i mean like and that's what it's all about like i feel you know I, I really like commend you and gabby for going through that process you know what i'm saying like and going through therapy apart because like it shows that you wanted to invest in yourself you know what mm -hmm. i mean now one of the things about me is that i, I just started understanding work ethic within the past four or five years mm. like, i wasn't a hard worker wow like like i'm not ambitious on my own mm. so like you i can't tell you like two or three places i want to go in the world like i don't i don't have any desire to leave the house like i'm like a eat burritos watch the office type dude like that's the type of dude <laughs> i am you know what i'm saying but god has given me this burden for fatherhood that i will like i'm like i'm willing to take this to the ends of the earth you know what i'm saying like i'm willing to do whatever i have to do mm. and this I cannot sleep. I cannot just watch burritos. I, I mean, eat burritos. I cannot just, you know what I'm saying? Like I cannot just sit because I have something inside of me that God has given me a message that I feel like is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so it's only the ambition that I get from God that allows me to do that. Now, had I had a, more of my ducks in the row in the beginning and it wasn't about survival, I would have probably taken the time to get the therapy I need. But right now I'm still learning how to manage my time, manage employees, mm -hmm we're you know pay you know pay things on time like it's weird out here you know what i'm saying <laughs> like you know you say i got the office and i'm still trying to figure out how to manage things around here and you know relationships and then there's all these other things even though therapy is super high on like yo you need to do this for the rest of your life yeah like not in time the rest of your life but for the benefit of the rest of your life and the rest of, you know um yeah, it's just something that it doesn't stay in the front of my mind like it should. But I commend you and Gabby for going to do that because I know it's made you better humans for each other. Yeah, man. I mean, just you know, just just knowing about being able to identify those triggers. But thank thank you for thank you for acknowledging that. But yeah, and even still, the craziest thing is still, like you know, you like go to therapy. I was like, you know, go go to therapy. I go through the twelve step biblical recovery. I'm gonna be healed. Everything's gonna be great. We're gonna move forward. Mm -hmm. This is gonna. Man, no, not so much. And that's the part that that's the part that and that's one of the things that challenges me in marriage. Yeah, because we 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 go through the couples grow group, and you know we did the premarital. It's like you do all this preparation, but then you still you still bump heads. Yeah, I mean the thing is, is like you're never gonna stop bumping heads. That's encouraging. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's just the truth. Like you're always gonna bump heads. Like you guys are two different people. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, 
I think the the interesting thing is like how you deal with it and how you handle it when you do bump heads because yeah. it's always going to be a miscommunication. It's always going to be an issue. It's you know, and even if there's like I, I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, we read the Enneagram book and now we're great. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay, you know, but you still have little issues because you're flawed people, you know, and you're going to have issues. And I and I don't think that. And, you know, even like going back to how married are you, like a lot of the conversations we have on the podcast. So for the first time we're having these conversations and we're often like shocked and like appalled and like, man, I didn't realize I married you Mm. like that person that believes that. Are you Uh insane? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Um, You know, you just sometimes you just can't win, you know, Uh, but I do believe that, you know, marriage brings out uh, marriage. All all is about forming you into one. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. The less time you've been married, the more difficult it's going to you, you're going to know that person or like even if you've been married for years, but you spend no time together, mm-hmm. you're not going to know that person. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's not so much about not pissing her off or not upsetting this person or whatever or pleasing her mom. It's not it, it's not so much about that as much as much it is about like loving each other regardless of whatever, you know. And so what marriage teaches you is selfless love because Yvette, my wife, is going to do everything that she thinks I want, which is not what I want at all. Mm. It's what she wants to give me. And I'm going to give her everything oh, wow. I want to give her. Wow. But that's not what she wants. I'm, But I'm giving her my best of what I think she wants. Uh. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like marriage is like giving your all, right, and receiving nothing in return. That's what it feels like from the, like, you know, the 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 gentiles perspective i would i should you know i would say or like the 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 non-believing perspective you know what i'm saying it's like Mm. you you think you're getting nothing in return but sometimes what that person is giving you is their best it's just not what you expected oh you know what i'm saying man yeah it's pretty crazy you dropped something right there man i'll be dropping bars man i'm telling you man check out my album (laughs) oh man yeah talk about talk about talk about the music because i didn't because i found like i told you i found you and i you know was introduced to what what you do by way of how married are you yeah and then i started to look a little bit more a little bit more at belief in fatherhood yeah and then i saw that you did also have music yeah so yeah talk talk a little bit how did he, how did music even come about for you man i was never really talented man in the music thing like i was i used to suck you know what i mean just bad and so what happened was um i got i started going to church met a dude who's a rapper i you know, got saved, became his DJ, we started doing Christian music, and then I wrote a little rhyme, and it was good. So I feel like God just blessed me with the gift of music as soon as I got saved. So then, you know, like I kept working, and then I just got really, really good at telling stories. And the, the hard part is, and it's going to hit you too because, you know, you're a speaker, right? So I used to think I was a rapper, so all I would do was rap, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but then I got a camera and I'm like, oh shoot, like I can, I can, I'm actually kind of like a documentarian, you mm-hmm. know? And then I started speaking and I'm like, oh man, I'm actually, a, I'm a speaker and of sorts, you know? And so I'm actually a storyteller, right? Mm-hmm. So at the top of it is stories. And I, I was trying to define myself by the, the, the form I was doing it in. Mm. So I was saying that I was a rapper. I was saying I was a speaker. I was saying I was, but really I'm a storyteller and I can use any medium. That's you know good. what I'm saying? So hip hop is just something I do. It's something I'm very gifted at. I will say it's an unfair advantage at how I can tell stories and how I can come up with words mm. um, and make it sound decent. Like it doesn't sound corny when I'm talking about a diaper bag. I can make it sound fresh. You know what mm. I mean? And so um, that's just one of the unfair advantages that I use in Belief in Fatherhood, the YouTube channel. So every video that I make has a song that I wrote for the video. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. What? It's pretty deep, man. I get a, I, like a, li- a little tear drops when people say, yeah, man, I, I listen to How Married Are You, but I haven't checked out Belief in Father. I'm like, that's the whole thing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're not a parent, you're not checking for it. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing. But like, I feel like Belief in Fatherhood, like the new stuff we got is like, it's just so... It's rounded out. 
you know what I'm saying? Like you leave mm. with a song, you leave with a message, you leave inspired, you leave maybe crying. Like it's it's like a healing situation. The new sure. so this is stuff that's coming. This is stuff that this stuff that just came out. Like when I cut Theo's hair, that oh. was like one of those ones. Like I wrote that song specifically for that story. Wow. Yeah. With you doing a song for every video, so the song is included in the video, or it's it's included in the video and it's also streamable. So you can stream it on Apple, Spotify, whatever. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, so typically when you do music, do you do you do it in the form of albums, mixtapes, or you do it in that? So I used I, last album I put out was called In Fatherhood. It came out in twenty seventeen. Usually okay. every time I have a baby, I make an album, but I didn't do that this last baby. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, let's see. I put music out as singles now because I'm kind of burned by the album process. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like when you do an album, it takes so much like you know like politics and BS, and I'm just like man, I don't really have time to be like. You know, begging people to send me a beat or begging people to send, mm. finish a verse. Like, that's mm. not my style. And so, like, I'm just kind of like, I'll just, I'll do it and I'll, I'll sing on it. Like, I'll, I'll do it. Like, if we don't got the bass line, I'll, I'll, I'll do a beatbox. Like, I'll, I'll say it with my voice. Like, I'm just all about getting this stuff done. I hate being told what I can and can't create. That is, like, a big thing for me. That's why I want to own one of these places one day. Because I'm like, I want to be able to use my creativity on, with no limits. You mm. know what I mean? Um, and so... I make music for every single vlog, every single episode. How long does it take you to produce one episode? It takes me, it depends on the workflow. It depends on the story. Um, some things, it takes a while because I'm kind of like, I don't, I can't find, I'm trying to put the story together and I might have to shoot out another scene or something like that. But like the last video we put out, you know, George, the homie came through to the house for like two and a half hours. He shot. I edited it that day. I edited it in like two hours. He color corrected it. Um, and the only part that took a while was, you know, I, I sent I sent the part out that I was like, yo, I need a song for this part. So I sent it out for, to a friend of mine. He scored it and I wrote a song off of what he scored. And I had a friend come through and sing it. And the only problem was my friend came through and sang it, but he his tone was off. So I had to get pitch corrected and that's what took a long time. So it probably took us like maybe five days Top to bottom to finish that. Yeah. Man. And how, how often do you release on your YouTube channel? Once a week now. Yeah, we release, release once a week. I was doing it three times a week, and uh, you would see that people were actually engaging less because it was too much content. Mm. So I hit them really hard on Monday, and if I can get to another one, I'll do another one on Wednesday. Yeah, but mostly just one day a week. Wow. And then y'all's podcast, the How Married Are You? Is Twice that, a week, yeah. And that's, not, that's on a separate YouTube channel? Yeah. Um, yeah, how married are you? It's a separate YouTube, it's a separate experience. Sit down talking, mm. um, but we really enjoy that song because it's like the real time we get to kind of dive deep and get to know each other in a new way. It's really fun for us. And how long have you been married now? It'll be ten years in August. Wow. Yeah, man. Dang. Yeah, ten years in August. Dime. Yeah. Man, super excited about the ten year, man. Yeah. Man. man. So I watched. Uh, I think this is. I think this was a belief in fatherhood episode, and I watched where you. You brought out a chef, was it? Oh yeah. Talk, talk 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 a little bit about that. So you're talking about um when I did the food for thought and I did the rap and the thing. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, so that was right downstairs actually. So, so I, I've been meaning to bring back this segment that I had on early in Belief in Father's Food for Thought, and basically it's like you know beats and thoughts over me cooking. It's very therapeutic, I feel. And so um, the songs I'm releasing on Belief in Fatherhood are basically showed on with this chef. Uh, Mikel Anthony, he's an amazing chef. He's a friend of mine. He was actually in my wedding, a really good friend of mine. Oh, wow. And um, so we basically just, you know, we bring out a pair of shoes. I bring out a pair of shoes that, you know, I've never worn before, put them on, rock them, and he makes a dish that complements the shoe. And it's like this whole, like, creative experience. Man. It's just different mediums, yeah, merged together. That's that's pretty awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. I would just want to be just inside of your head just to see how that all it's works. It's weird. Man. It's really weird, man. It's it's like um, it's it's frustrating because I would be annoyed if I was married to me. Like mm. I understand how annoyed I am. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, but I don't even talk about my ideas a lot. I just do them. Like I just like yeah, I just got an idea. Let's see, let's see if this works. Um, and what's crazy now is that I'm starting to hang out with people who are also kind of like. Like, cause I used to hang out with people who were kind of like, man, we can't afford that. Or man, that seems like it'd be too much. But now I hang out with people who are kind of like, yeah, I don't care what it costs. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Like let's, so now that's kind of dangerous. Cause we're both kind of like, also like, oh shoot. 
how much it's gonna cost to rent that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we just, but we we make the art that we want to make, which is like so amazing. Like for me, it means so much that I can write a song, and like, it hits four people super deep. Mm. Like I'm depth over with all day. Okay. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh man. Okay. So so since you said the 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 piece about you said if you were married to you, you said it'd be frustrating. Yeah. What what piece of encouragement would you give to someone who is not quote unquote a creative mm-hmm. or an artist and but they're but they're married to one? Yeah, I would um you know, I would say accountability is key. Um but at the same time like knowing the difference between accountability and nagging, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Cuz that's like a big thing. Um I would say you know, be a supporter in any way you can. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really commend Gabby, man, for, like, getting you out here to talk with me. Like, that's big. Like, she is an amazing person for that. Like, like for real. You know what I'm saying? Because that investment in you, like, even, even if, I don't know what you got out of this, but I'm just like, man, like, you, if you think it's going to help, cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's like, yeah, for my, you know, my, my, my fiance and I are getting married, and for his marriage, his gift for the wedding, I wanted to give him, you know, a dinner with you so we, you guys could talk. And I was like, what? Like, you know what I'm saying? But if she, you know, if that's what you think is going to help, like, I really commend her for that. I think she's awesome. Um, but stuff like that, um, patience is really important because it's going to take a, mm-hmm. a long time for your, your creative to find himself or mm-hmm. herself. It's going to take a, it's going to be an investment. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I would urge them to, you know, just kind of stay in their head kind of because, I remember like being a kid and like I had to like limit my imagination because it wasn't beneficial for, you know, whatever the situation was, whether it be like, you know, homework or whatever. You like, it was just kind of like this, like your dream, like your imagination isn't going to pay bills, but I get paid to imagine, Mm. you know what I'm saying? And so all those little ideas that I once had as a kid and me like thinking about one day writing a movie and I, I pushed it away because I didn't see no black directors or I didn't see no black creatives or like, I just like, I'm never going to do that. My mom was thinks I should be an engineer or my mom thinks I should work in a, uh, you know, uh, on a conveyor belt, you know, mm. at, you know, at a warehouse, not that there's anything wrong with that, but those ideas are now safe. So I often call those ideas back and say, what did you want to do when you were a kid? Like, what are the mm. things? Because those things are safe now. Wow. You know? That's yeah. good. That's good. Glenn. Yeah, bro. Dang. I'll be dropping gems. It's going to be a good podcast, dog. You're dropping them all over the place. <laughs> You're dropping them all over the place. Man, all right, all right. So now, like I was saying before, though, I have different segments of the podcast, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm getting back to doing the segments. Cool. So here we are. Um, so I have this I have this segment where uh, I like to call it This or That. Mm-hmm. Right? So if I was like, Glenn, Coke or Pepsi, and you would say? Uh, i say Coke. Okay, see, exactly. Okay, cool, 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 yeah. cool. You got it. You you already got on. So I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions, and you're going to say one or the other. Am I going to say why just one or the other? No, 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 okay. one or the other, one or cool. the other. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to explain, because I know you might you might have a, a sponsorship deal with Coke or Pepsi. Exactly. I don't know. Can't go hey, there. Yep. Hey, no, 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 we're not doing that. But okay, are you ready? Mm-hmm. And this is rapid fire, because somebody, I brought somebody on one time. Oh, Lord. Just sat there thinking too long. Man, he was like, uh, I was like, ah. Yeah, yeah it no. ain't working. First, you got to go with it. First he, instinct, whatever. He probably the one that made the whole thing cancel. You started oh. doing the second. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my man. Oh, or a woman. Who yeah. knows? Oh, yeah. hey, who you knows? know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. Oh, God. That's so funny. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> you ready? You got yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Good deal. Okay, good deal. Uh, waffles or pancakes? Pancakes. Burger King or McDonald's? Burger King. Raising Cane's or Chick Fil A? Chick Fil A all day. Adidas or Nike? Nike. There it is. See, that was, yeah, man, that wasn't wasn't painful. Yeah, that was so easy yeah, too, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Nah, I seen you with them Nikes. Uh, I, I don't remember uh, what like. That's gonna describe all Nikes. I'm about to say they were the bright colored ones. Yeah, uh, I got a lot of but Nikes. But you did. Uh, it wasn't. It was like maybe was it a month ago. Story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like trying to figure out what to wear. I think so. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, for the YouTube Black Dinner. 
Yeah, I had these uh these Nikes, man. This joints are cold. They they're the blue blue the greats. They're Air, uh, Jordan One blue the great joints. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I like shoes now. Uh, for a while, you know, I I didn't I didn't buy a lot of shoes because I was trying to buy diapers. You know what I'm saying? And so oh, now, gosh. and so now, like when I buy a pair of shoes, it's only for food for thought or to go out to speak. So oh. they're all a business expense. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? So that's a write off. Uh, you feel well me? Played. Yeah. Well played. Okay. Yeah, that's how I do it. Okay. So now I want to ask you this one. I want to ask you, even though I didn't give you time to prepare for this. Um, so I do something called the Winter Circle of the Week. Mm hmm. And that's when I give you the opportunity just to shed light or shine light or give flowers to someone who you feel is out here grinding, someone who you feel is out here working, but you don't feel that they've received their just due. Mm, yeah. You can you can say more than one person if you desire. Yeah. I w uh, okay, I, I will go ahead and say, um, you know, Sopa and Anthony Rush. Those are, that's a couple, um, but Anthony is really like pushing his um, T-shirt brand creative. Right? I've seen that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And so... I don't know. I, I love them so much and I just think they're awesome people and beautiful people and uh I don't know, like they they work hard um and they're trying to figure it out and they're also Dallas peoples too, so you guys definitely should link up. They're really good people. Um so yeah, them and uh, who else? There's a lot of people who are doing good work. Uh Chef Toya from Louisiana, she's a chef who's an amazing uh, always working hard trying to do what she's doing. Um, I'm very proud of her. Um, she's an amazing chef. All her food is is crazy good. You know what I'm saying? So um, shout out to her. And then let's do uh, another friend of mine. So RJV underscore collective is a friend okay. of mine. He does all of my graphics. Uh, um, okay. He's a hard worker. He does a lot of stuff for Reach. He does a lot of stuff for anybody. He's just He's one of those people who you really can't bend. Mm. You can't stop him. Because oh, wow. he'll find a way around it, but he doesn't understand how valuable he is. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, a big goal for me is, like, be able to pay him full time. You know what I mean? Because he's just so incredibly creative. Um, he figured out how to animate on his own. And, you know, he's just one of those dudes you just cannot stop. Uh, so, Man. yeah, RJ will probably be my top person for sure. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Man, yeah. And uh, so, so the rushes, I have seen that because Tina... And Tina and Tammy. Yeah. Uh, so I met Tina in college. Okay. And then she was telling me about Tammy before, like, she went out to meet. She was telling me, she's like, yeah, I reached out to this guy to learn a little bit more about photography. And then she got a husband out of it. And then, yeah. And then Tammy, actually, he's the one who took my uh, my photo on the cover of my book. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. we love we love them, too. Well, Tammy is just... Ah, oh, man. I mean, you're talking yeah. about somebody who's amazing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I would say Tammy and RJ are like neck and neck. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think Tammy has really figured out what he's supposed to be doing, and RJ mm -hmm. just hasn't figured out his niche yet. Mm -hmm. um, and RJ is one of those people you just like, you want to give him everything. You want to give him the world, just root for him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, Tammy's like the same, man. He's just such a humble, amazing, talented person yeah. Yeah. who's a fanatic about his art and that's another thing that's about true. creatives right like anybody who's a creative they need to be fanatical about what they do mm. like almost to a sense of like it's almost obsession and it's not like unhealthy but it is close yeah like it needs to be kind of like nah man this ain't right it's off you know what i'm saying mm. like i gotta switch it like and i'm not saying that to the point of unproductivity like they yeah. need to be productive mm -hmm. but they also kind of need to be fanatical um and so i used to do this thing on my channel where I put subtitles when the kids talk. Every time they say a word, like the word would pop up in a certain color mm -hmm. to, to signify which kid is talking. Gotcha. And that's something that was like taking me, like I would finish a, a seven, eight hour edit and then I would tag another eight hours on just to do the subtitles. Oh, wow. That's how bad it was. But people used to be like, man, you don't need subtitles. Da, da, da. And I was just like, well, eventually I'm just going to get faster. So it won't, it won't, it won't always take eight hours. Mm -hmm. But I was fanatical about that because that was a huge part of my brand. So every video I do has to have that in it. And sometimes I miss the mark there. And you can tell the difference. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm there with you on the on on just having that level of either honor for the gift yes. or respect for the craft. Because yep. I think that ultimately if God is the gift giver and he gives us the ability to work 
and he also gives us like that eye then for them to go in and go all in at it in that way i think i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing yeah yeah i'm not i'm not mad about it yeah but it can it can be kind of like to where it put it puts you in a position where you don't you never put anything out because you didn't get it exactly well, right that, yeah, and, you know what i'm saying so it's like it's a fine balance that you got to find yeah. a balance but but my 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 crew my team the people i work with they are people who are kind of obsessed mm. with their with what they do I like that's it. how good they are I like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not against it. Yeah. So th- this th- this has been a great episode, Glenn. This been it's been a super good episode. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> you rubbing your hands together like you about to get some ad money. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's not what we on. Okay. But uh, but I, I like to close it out with with a quote of the week. Yeah. Or like, what would your favorite quote be? Or what could be? What's a quote that you just want to share that? that really inspires you or you feel that can inspire somebody else? Man, definitely be Galatians 5.9. Um, do not be weary in doing good. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's one of those things where it's kind of like you, you know, for eventually you will reap a harvest, right? So it's just sometimes, man, you're doing good work and it just don't feel like it's hitting. Mm. It don't feel like it's doing nothing for nobody and the numbers ain't looking right and the likes ain't there. Mm. You just sitting there like, why don't you? You know, just don't be tired in doing that good work. Talk like, to me, Glenn. You know what I'm saying? Talk like, you got to keep going. <laughs> that stuff is vital, not only for the people it eventually will hit, but it's vital for you and your relationship with God. Obedience is super important. So that'll be my 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 quote of the week for sure. I'm not going to drop that. I'm just going to throw your mic. I'm just going to throw it at you. <laughs> <laughs> like my parents, you just... You yeah. act like you got to throw the mic, man. Yeah, man. That was good, man. Amen, amen. Glenn, where, where can where can the good people find you, man? Where can they connect with you? Yeah. So if you are not a parent, or you are a parent, or whatever, you were a parent. Belief in fatherhood <laughs> is the YouTube channel for you. It will help you understand perspective and how your parents once felt, how you will feel as a parent, or what you're dealing with right now. You'll have someone to relate to. If you are not married. Or you are married. How married are you is the channel for you because it prepares you for all the ups and downs and things that you are dealing with or will be dealing with in uh, in marriage. And then you can follow us at How Married Are You on Instagram and at Belief Mel on Instagram as well. There it is, man. Yep. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming good. all the way out here and spending some time with your boy. Thank you, Gabby, for being an amazing wife and killing it. Uh, and yeah man I hope this was all that you wanted it to be it was beyond man amen it, it really was it really was good people you all heard you heard Mr. Belief you heard him man subscribe to the channel subscribe to both channels actually yep. connect because uh, like I've shared I've even shared sometime on the podcast a little bit about y'all but you all gotta you gotta listen to the podcast and definitely follow the YouTube because I'm just curious to see what how, how you all continue to just elevate and serve fathers, man, and communities. Yeah. And, and like I said, whenever you had that live podcast, we're going to be there. All right, cool. That's what's up. And I and I look forward to seeing how you, you know, really grind through this, this season. Let's get it, man. All right? Yeah. I'm holding you accountable, man. Yeah. Oh, all right? Man. There it is. All there right, bro. It is. All right. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> until next time, this is Jonathan Jones signing out with... Belief. Mr. Belief. Reminding you to... Sp- Speak your success, believe in your greatness, and continue to create the life and business of your dreams. Why would you want to live any other way? <laughs>